Hi, I'm Mitch Clifford, co-founder and lead animator at Five Live Studios. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some of the gameplay Windbound has to offer. We're starting off a couple hours in, near the completion of the first chapter of the game. Uh, at this point our protagonist Kara is equipped with some basic items and is exploring this grassy island to locate a tower and progress to the next point of the game. Here, Kara has come across some old ruins. Uh, these are remnants of the people that lived here long before, and you'll find these scattered throughout the archipelago. Uh, you can explore them and gather different materials like the sea shards, and they can be used to upgrade Kara's skills later on. Right now, we're a little better equipped, so we'll go ahead and take a proper look around. It's important to stay alert while you're exploring. Uh, you'll notice a few of the creatures that live on this island are currently nearby. Uh, their threat levels aren't always immediately obvious when you first see them, uh, but you can learn their nature by taking the time to observe their behaviors. Now, Kara may hail from an extremely skilled tribe of hunters and gatherers, uh, but you'll need to make sure you pick your battles wisely or find a way to sneak past and evade the more dangerous creatures at least until you're skilled enough and better equipped to take them on. Here we've come across the last tower for this chapter. Uh, you need to scale these and collect their keys to progress, although their true significance will take some time to uncover. Uh, let's take a closer look and see what we can learn. You'll notice that Kara's amulet that she wears has a special connection to the towers and to other areas of the archipelago. The towers also act as a great vantage point for the island that you're currently on. Uh, they can help you get a view and make up your mind as to what you might do next. Uh, now what's different with Windbound as compared to a lot of other survival games is how it encourages you to keep moving forward rather than settling in one location. Uh, because food and other resources are effectively finite on a given island, uh, it's important to take a moment when you're deciding your next move. Uh, because the islands are procedurally generated, uh, the layout and the resources you'll find are uh, never experienced quite the same way twice. Right, now that we've got what we need and completed the final tower, we'll set a course for the next chapter of islands. we're headed for that yellow beacon in the distance. Your boat is your most important companion in Windbound. Uh, crafting is modular and varied and your choices will have an impact on the way you sail and survive at sea. You'll face harsh fauna, coral reefs and rock formations while you're sailing, so you'll want to keep these sorts of things in mind when you're building. Uh, you don't want to smash a hull or an outrigger on some jagged rocks when you're a long way from shore. You can upgrade your boat uh, whenever you want to, provided that you have enough resources with you. Uh, you can add masts, additional hulls, uh, perhaps some storage, or even a fire if you want to cook some food on the go. Uh, however, some construction choices will change the way you sail more than others. Adding a mast will change the way your boat travels, as we're now utilizing wind rather than paddling, so you'll have to quickly learn how to direct it and to make sure that you stay on course. So now in this situation, the wind is blowing in the complete opposite direction to where we're headed. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't get there. Uh, here, we can go ahead and tighten the sails all the way so that they're sitting directly in line with the hull. Uh, you still can't go directly into the wind, but now you can do what's called tacking. Uh, that's a sort of zigzagging motion that'll keep you moving forward until the winds become a bit more favorable.
Here we're approaching the Nautilus Tower. This particular tower marks the end of an island group, or the chapter. Uh, but before we can get to the top, Kara will need to use the keys that were collected from the towers uh, at the pedestals. Uh, these pedestals will then extend the bridges and that will allow us to reach the very top of the tower. So in the presence of her amulet, the tower transports Kara through to a surreal oceanic world known as the Crossing. Kara finds herself here surrounded by old murals. Uh, they're restored one at a time, slowly uncovering the history of the archipelago and the people who used to live there. Now Kara can return to her boat, uh, which was also brought along, and has to sail through the crossing. Uh, the crossing is a dangerous, intimidating gauntlet, but it's the only way to break through the ever-aging storm that surrounds the islands, and to continue on to the next chapter of the game. So here is the first glimpse of the mystical presence that lies beneath the sea here. Uh, it's called the Nautilus, but that's about as much as I can share here as we really want players to uncover the story for themselves as they play through Windbound.
Now this is one of the shrines where Kara can upgrade her abilities, which are called blessings, uh, by placing offerings of the sea shards which were collected earlier. Uh, these offering shrines are only available uh, if you reach the end of the crossing. Although there is also the opportunity to, at the very least, change which blessings you've got equipped after you've died and you're preparing to re-enter the archipelago. Right, so we're now on the other side of one of the storm barriers in a new chapter and a new island group. Uh, each island group is larger than the one before with more islands to explore. We've got a wind blowing perpendicular to our travel direction here, so we'll keep the sail taut for now. Uh, this can tip the boat over if it hasn't been built stably enough. But this is just a grass sail and it doesn't catch a whole lot of breeze, so we'll be fine here. A new island group means new resources, new creatures and challenges to get to grips with. Now we appear to be on a rocky bamboo island. So first things first, we'll ensure that we're prepared for this new area with a quick check of the inventory. Uh, a simple grass sling will be handy here since it'll let us make use of all the rocks that are scattered about and use them as projectiles. Uh, it's pretty effective as long as you manage to hit something. Now we can see a couple of young razorbacks walking around in the long grass here. Uh, they make for a relatively easy target with a rock. Ah! Make sure you keep in mind that where there are young razorbacks, mum is not usually far away. Uh, she doesn't take kindly to threats to her family and she doesn't go down without a fight. Uh, but if you manage to defeat one, Razorbacks offer a good amount of useful resources with uh, meat, bone and hide. Now you are able to go ahead and eat raw meat if you're in a pinch, uh, but you won't actually recover any health. All that'll do is keep your hunger at bay. Uh, so if you can, you're always better off making a fire if you don't already have one, uh, putting it on to cook and making sure you get the most out of your hunt. All right now, meat will take a little while to cook, so we'll go ahead, explore this island a bit and see if we can gather some resources while we wait.
All right, so a keen eye will have spotted the plane stalker up there in the distance. So we've got to be a bit careful. They're the size of a lion and about as aggressive as one too. Uh, sometimes you'll just find them asleep amongst the scattered bones of their prey. Uh, but when they're not, they are super agile expert predators. Now you may have also noticed the change in the music here. And that's indicating that we're near either some ruins or a tower. Our composer utilized throat singers in the compositions which relate to the past civilizations. Now we're still a bit low on health from the fight with the Razorback. Uh, so we'll avoid the plane stalker for now and keep looking for some other resources. Uh, that meat that we put on to cook should be done pretty soon and that'll be helpful before we face this predator. So there's only so much that Kara can carry in her inventory at a given time. Uh, but on this island, we picked up a lot of materials that are going to be really handy for boat building. Uh, so before we head back in, we'll go ahead, we'll do a few upgrades on our boat, and that'll also give us a bit more inventory space. Alright, so we're in pretty good shape now, so we should hopefully be able to take on that plane stalker. Alright, so as you can see that battle was pretty close, uh, it took a lot out of Kara, but it was well worth it for those Planestalker horns, and as well as getting some more meat and hide. Thank you very much for watching, uh, that's all we've got for today, uh, but you can stay up to date on windboundgame.com, and please go ahead and follow us on social media, at windboundgame. Uh, thanks again from all of us at Five Lives Studios, and we can't wait for you to try Windbound for yourselves.